This is a giant step toward the holy grail of energy research. This is too good to be true. And yet we've taken a giant step forward. The primary energy source for the Earth is sunlight. Only a portion of solar radiation is converted into light that can be seen by human eyes. The sun's ultraviolet radiation helps our skin tan, but if we overexpose ourselves without protection, it can lead to cancer. Theoretical physicist Michio Kaku believes solar flares are one of the greatest hazards to our world right now and worries that we are sitting ducks for a possibly harmful solar flare. Though it recently smashed clean energy records, China's artificial sun is the ultimate energy for mankind's future and could be a possible solution for Michio Kaku's fears. How is the artificial sun China created recently an accomplishment? How would it greatly benefit us? Join us as we explore everything we know about China's artificial sun. Large eruptions of highly ionized gas from the solar corona, known as coronal mass ejections, which are characterized as massive eruptions of charged particles, are caused by the sun. The majority of ejections come from the sun's surface's active areas. The solar wind, which includes the released gas, can produce geomagnetic storms that harm the media and the energy grid when they interact with the magnetic field of the planet. The solar system is centered on the sun, all other bodies in the solar system, including satellites attached to planets, dwarf planets, asteroids, comets, and dust, revolve around the Sun. The Sun has a mass 332,900 times greater than that of the Earth and a volume 1.3 million times greater than that of our planet, accounting for 99.86% of the mass in the solar system. 150 million kilometers or so separate the Earth from the Sun. Like other stars, the Sun, too, has its own light. Unlike the Moon, which just reflects sunlight, it is different. The Sun is essential to us because it not only provides us with the ability to consume vegetation and animals, but also because it strengthens our bones. Strengthening bones need vitamin D, which we can only acquire from exposure to sunlight for a brief period of time each day. Our bones would deteriorate and break very easily without sunlight. As scientific knowledge has grown, it is now understood that vitamin D from sunlight can also help us lose weight, boost our immune, prevent type 2 diabetes and hypertension, and be linked to the production of several hormones. Through the process of photosynthesis, which all life on our planet depends on either directly or indirectly, solar energy is stored in glucose by living things. A plant increases photosynthesis and produces food for growth by using the energy the light provides. Oxygen is produced as a result. Cows, for instance, consume plants as food and turn them into nutrients and energy for growth. The Earth's climate and weather are also influenced by solar energy. Charged particles from the sun's eruption in 1859, which included a large solar flare and coronal mass ejection, CME caused havoc on Earth. The significant solar storm, which is now officially known as the Carrington event, demonstrated the potentially disastrous impact our sun might have on Earth. Telegraph networks were taken down throughout Europe and North America as a result of the solar storm, which also caused telegraph poles to sparkle and some offices to catch fire. Even stranger, Tahiti has reportedly received reports of the Northern Lights, according to NASA. Today's technology-dependent world would likely be brought to its knees if another solar storm of size happened. We also nearly avoided one such storm in the summer of 2012. A coronal mass ejection, or cloud of plasma, left the sun that year on July 23rd at a speed of 3,000 kilometers per second. Fortunately, the coronal mass ejection avoided Earth as it traversed its orbit, but later analysis revealed that it was one of the strongest solar storms ever observed. The storm may have even been stronger than the Carrington event. If it had hit, we would still be picking up the pieces. One of the researchers that alerted us to the risks posed by solar activity in 2012 was Dr. Michio Kaku, a theoretical physicist and the father of string field theory. That's something that's been laughed at, but we now realize it's actually riskier than we thought, he said. If you look through the records, 
you can find the infamous Carrington event in 1859. We saw strange activity on the sun. Telegraph wires and other forms of communication on Earth were completely destroyed. Michio Kaku claims that a modern-day version of the Carrington event would destroy the Internet, GPS, telecommunications, and weather satellites. The harm would be devastating in a world that greatly depends on our ability to instantly interact with individuals around the world. According to a 2013 analysis, the economic damage from a storm like this would cost between $0.6 trillion and $2.6 trillion in the U.S. alone, or between $0.43 trillion and $1.87 trillion. Power stations would be vulnerable. Additionally, they would be eliminated and short-circuited across all cities on Earth at once, not only in one city where other cities would come to others' aid. Ordinary, simple business transactions would be halted since you can't make a credit card transaction because the telephone wires are out. Society as we know it would be thrown back perhaps a hundred years into the past. This does not indicate that we will soon experience another storm of the Carrington magnitude. However, the occurrences in 1859 and 2012 should serve as a helpful reminder that we are frequently at the whim of the elements, particularly the cosmic ones. The planet has been fortunate enough to avoid the majority of the solar radiation that it spews into space. However, as Dr. Kaku pointed out, it's Russian roulette, but it means that our society as we know it is potentially in danger. So, why is the artificial sun necessary? The two main energy sources currently in use worldwide are coal and natural gas. However, both resources are scarce because it mimics the physics of the sun by combining atomic nuclei to create significant amounts of energy into electricity, nuclear fusion may be the cleanest energy source currently available. The method is safer than fission nuclear power and uses no fossil fuels or radioactive waste in the process. The artificial sun that was five times hotter than the real thing was created by China's nuclear fusion reactor, which garnered media attention. After maintaining a nuclear reaction at 70 million degrees Celsius for more than 17 minutes, the device set new world records. The experimental advanced superconducting tokamak, EAST, a project known as the Artificial Sun, is run at a research facility in China's Hefei City in the Anhui province. It's not really a sun, though. Experimental advanced superconducting. Tokamak is not an energy ball that is ascending. Instead, it is a sizable piece of machinery with a donut-like shape that is firmly grounded to the Earth's surface by the effects of gravity. Instead of producing light or heat, this sun aims to produce a vast amount of clean energy that scientists want to harness to power cities. The nuclear fusion method it uses to produce energy mimics the sun's physics. In the center of a star, extreme pressure and heat combine atomic nuclei to form new elements. One helium atom is created by the nuclear fusion of four hydrogen atoms. Utilizing magnetic fields, tokamaks like experimental advanced superconducting. Tokamak use ionized gas, or turbulent, occasionally unstable plasma, to be contained in a loop course known as a torus. Up to hundreds of millions of degrees Fahrenheit, the temperature at which fusion processes start in stars, heavy hydrogen atoms like deuterium and tritium are heated within the tokamak by lasers. Researchers can simulate the strong gravitational pressure found in a star's core thanks to the heat. The atomic nuclei inside a tokamak will start to collide at these extreme temperatures, releasing energy that can be converted to electrical power. Prior to experimental advanced superconducting tokamak, the Taurus Supra tokamak in France, which ran for 6.5 minutes in 2003, held the world record for the greatest plasma duration time of any tokamak reactor. By holding a temperature of 50 million degrees Celsius for 70 seconds, the Korea Superconducting Tokamak Advanced Research, K-Star Reactor in South Korea, broke a world record in 2016. By maintaining temperatures of about 119 million degrees Celsius for 102 seconds, Experimental Advanced Superconducting, Tokamak beat Korea Superconducting Tokamak Advanced Research's record in 2021.
By running for 101 seconds at a record-breaking 120 million degrees Celsius, experimental advanced superconducting tokamak also broke a record in May of last year. In contrast, the actual sun's core only reaches a temperature of about 15 million degrees Celsius. The experimental advanced superconducting tokamak, in a breakthrough this year, created and held plasma for 403 seconds, breaking its own record of 101 seconds set in 2017. After more than 120,000 runs, the quantum leap was accomplished. The most recent accomplishment is an important milestone in the development of highly efficient, cost-effective thermonuclear fusion reactors. When it superheated a loop of plasma to temperatures five times hotter than the sun for more than 17 minutes in January 2022, the nation established another record. The East Nuclear Fusion Reactor maintained that temperature for 1,056 seconds at 70 million degrees Celsius. The experimental advanced superconducting tokamak underwent a groundbreaking demonstration of a new plasma operation scenario known as Super I Mode in January of this year. The record-breaking run was able to hold high energy both at the plasma edge and further inside the plasma by heating a plasma-charged gas composed of free-moving electrons and hydrogen ions to a temperature of 70 million degrees Celsius using magnetic fields. In contrast to fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas, which are in limited supply and have substantial negative environmental implications, the artificial sun employs raw materials that are practically inexhaustible on Earth. Because it is safer and cleaner, fusion energy is viewed as the ultimate energy for the future of humanity. There are no greenhouse gases and no radioactive byproducts of nuclear fusion. The Hefei Institutes of Physical Science scientists praised experimental advanced superconducting, Tokamak's accomplishments in increasing the nation's clean energy options, as opposed to fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and natural gas, which are in danger of being exhausted and pose a threat to the environment, raw materials required for the artificial sun are almost unlimited on Earth. Therefore, fusion energy is considered the ideal ultimate energy for the future of humanity. It's a piece of the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, ITR, a collaborative project centered in France that's slated to become the biggest nuclear reactor ever built. 35 nations, including the United States, the entire European Union, the United Kingdom, India, and China, are involved in the initiative. The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor has the most potent magnet in the world, which can generate a magnetic field that is 280,000 times more intense than the one found on Earth. The global fusion reactor is anticipated to start up in 2025, but China isn't stopping there. By the early 2030s, it hopes to have finished building a new tokamak fusion reactor. A significant advancement in clean energy is the invention of nuclear fusion. Scientists have recreated the mechanism that occurs at the center of the sun, which is the same method by which stars burn by fusing hydrogen atoms under tremendous pressure to make helium. This takes place inside coils of plasma, a superheated state of matter that is frequently referred to as the fourth state of matter outside of liquid, solid, and gas in a nuclear reactor. These coils reach temperatures that are challenging to achieve without any leakage. This has been a long-term goal for scientists, thus the experimental advanced superconducting tokamak milestone is significant. Nuclear fusion, as opposed to the combustion of fossil fuels, relies on hydrogen atoms, which are plentiful in the ocean. It generates an incredible quantity of energy without emitting any carbon. The globe is working together on this project and investing a ton of money in it because fusion energy has the potential to radically alter how people live on Earth. There is no need to stare up at the sky in fear of any artificial sun because the development of such a plentiful source of green energy would be a tremendous victory for the globe in the worldwide transition away from polluting forms of energy. On top of this, China's first artificial moon is also here. The artificial moon represents China's endeavors to perfect future lunar missions. Future lunar missions will benefit from the low gravity conditions created on Earth by this artificial moon. The moon's gravity, which is just 16% as strong as Earth's, is one of the trickiest factors to take into account when designing any technology that scientists wish to send to the moon. 
Reduced gravity is one of the ongoing difficulties of residing and working in space, according to Christopher Baker, program director for NASA's Flight Opportunities Program in 2021. The majority of systems created for use on Earth do not function the same way in other environments. With parabolic flights or drop towers, for example, we can simulate lunar gravity here on Earth, but the effect only lasts for a few seconds. One of the constant challenges with living and working in space is reduced gravity. For as long as you want, China's artificial moon can replicate lunar gravity. The artificial moon, built by Li Ruilin from China University of Mining and Technology, is being hailed as the first of its kind in the world and aims to advance lunar modeling. According to Li, the simulator has the power to eliminate gravity, and its effects can last as long as the user desires. Virtually anything may levitate when the magnetic field is strong enough. How does it function? A vacuum chamber with a cylinder 23.6 inches across is located at the center of China's artificial moon. This miniature moon's summit is coated in rocks and dust that resemble the lunar surface. Scientists can mimic the gravity of the real moon by modifying the magnetic field that is acting on the miniature moon. This might be tremendously helpful for testing technology that will be used on the moon. For instance, researchers could place a smaller size model of a 3D printer on the mini-moon and turn on the field to assess how well it might work for building lunar dwellings. If they choose, they can also increase the magnetic field strength enough to lift small things off the surface of the artificial moon. Lee was actually motivated by physicist Andre Geim's work, in which he levitated a frog to employ magnetic fields to simulate lunar gravity. China's space agency will utilize the facility housing its artificial moon to practice for upcoming lunar missions when it opens formally in the coming months. According to Li, it will also be accessible to researchers from all over the world. Although NASA hasn't disclosed any intentions to undertake research there, it would have no shortage of technology to test. Testing under partial gravity could be beneficial for a variety of tools we need for the Moon and Mars, such as technology for in-situ resource use, regolith mining, environmental control, and life support systems. Meanwhile, a Tokyo-based space business, AL, has declared it would produce the first artificial meteor shower in 2025, which will allow people in the UK to witness man-made shooting stars. The celestial light show, known as Project Sky Canvas, will comprise the deployment of space fireworks and the launch of satellites into orbit. In addition to providing unprecedented levels of entertainment, the project's inventors at ALE plan to collect atmospheric data from the mesosphere that will be crucial to the study of climate change. About 31 to 53 miles, 50 to 85 kilometers above our planet, the mesosphere is mainly undiscovered and is currently too high for weather balloons and planes to record yet too low for satellites to see. Dr. Lena Okajima, founder and chief executive of ALE, said their aim is to contribute to the sustainable development of humankind and to bring space closer to all of us. They believe we can further our scientific understanding of climate change while also inspiring curiosity and interest in people all over the world about space and the universe. Experiments on the ground have successfully produced multicolored shooting stars, much to the delight of its inventors, but the company claims it is still too early to tell whether such production is conceivable in orbit. It is hoped that by examining each star's light output and trajectory, researchers would learn more about the composition of the atmosphere and wind speed. The launch, which was initially slated for 2020 but was postponed because of a satellite issue, is now expected to occur as planned. And how does it operate? By burning up after entering the Earth's atmosphere and leaving a dazzling trail of gas in their wake, meteoroids, space dust and small asteroids naturally produce shooting stars. To duplicate this, one centimeter sized metal pellets will be launched into space by satellites that will orbit the planet before releasing them 249 miles, 400 kilometers, above the surface. The particles are anticipated to travel nearly 8,000 miles, or one-third of the distance around the globe, before they enter the atmosphere at an altitude of 60-80 kilometers and illuminate the night sky. Thousands of people will watch the show in many nations. 
The first live meteor shower created by humans would then be seen by everyone in the entire world. What do you think of China's and Japan's impressive advancements so far? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.